It's very important for midshipmen to visit the Holocaust Museum because it offers something that's a little bit different from the normal training that we receive. The mission of the United States Naval Academy is to develop midshipmen morally, mentally, and physically, and I honestly cannot think of a better way to develop someone morally than to have them go to this amazing museum where they can actually see what happens when moral issues are not considered. Things like the Holocaust can't happen with just a leader. There have to be other people behind him. And there were thousands of people who supported Hitler, who could have stopped him, and they didn't. One of the big things they always stress here at the Naval Academy is accountability for your actions. As officers, we each will have a ton of choices in our career and we'll make decisions, whether it's a junior officer or a senior officer, that will affect people's lives. It really shows how important it is to always be thinking, always be, be questioning and making sure that you're making the right decision and making sure that what you're doing aligns with your morals and with the values that, that the United States is based on. We get to the museum, we progress up to the permanent exhibit on, on the fourth floor, and then it's a self-guided tour around where you get to see the pictures, the artifacts, the videos of what happened and how the United States looks at it. Coming here, you're able to see things in a different light. You're able to see what it's like as a person, whether you're one individual soldier or one individual person in a camp, relating that to the big picture. One common thing is when you progress from one floor to another, there's usually something that hits you right away. And actually a picture I saw today with an SS soldier shooting a clergyman, and it made you wonder really what was going through that soldier's head. You get a different perspective of what actually happened. The classroom experience is extremely different for each company. While we structure it to be very similar and the basis of the outline is similar, different people think different thoughts and want to talk about different ideas. And these different ideas is what structures the classroom discussion. What do you hold on to that is a common ground to kind of cause people to see where the right path is? I guess you could go back to like the quote that was talked about at the beginning of this where someone stood by because at first you know they were persecuting the Jews, well he's not Jewish and just things like that and until it got down to they were coming after me and there was no one to stand up for me. With the Constitution, it gives us all of that defining moment that we have to like do something about it instead of just stand by and watch it happen until there's nothing to stand by for. The companies coming together and interacting with their company mates in these small group discussions is very valuable. Most of their training to this point has been in accomplishing tasks, and now it was a chance for them to interact with each other, to discuss ethics, to discuss morals, to discuss decisions. It's really a unique opportunity for them to explore something in their training environment that they haven't had a chance to interact with yet. Well, each time I go to the Holocaust Museum, it brings something different, small things that I didn't notice the first time. The second time I got to go, and it was just the 40 of us in our company, it was quiet. Uh, I actually went in front of everyone else just so I could be by myself, and I didn't have any of my friends around. Um, and I just tried to take it all in. The most important thing I took in is just how surprising it is that six million people died, and very few people stood up and stopped it in a country of millions. It started out so small as, you know, Jews wearing certain stars, and then it just escalated so much. And if you just started from the beginning and said no, things could have changed, and six million people would be alive. It gets overwhelming if you think about everything, but I would tell everyone who goes to the Holocaust Museum um, to just really remember and think about the individuals. Definitely the stories of survivors, people who 
had these awful things happen to them and yet continue to have lives and have graced us all by sharing their stories with us. And seeing on film American soldiers go into these places and the absolute horror that crossed their faces whenever they encountered these things was something that really struck a chord with me. One of the things written into my mind and, and into my heart, I think, was never again. When you go through the Holocaust Museum, you see that there's a capacity for evil. How do we as, as moral actors be able to understand that capacity and be able to overcome that and transcend that? The German officers and, and German soldiers who participated in the atrocities of the Holocaust lost all perspective and it's something that we can't lose as military officers. We have to maintain that. It's what we owe to the innocent civilians, the indigenous people that we're trying to defend and protect. It's what we owe to the American public who's given us this special trust and confidence. Having midshipmen spend time at the Holocaust Museum helps them take lessons from that history and apply it to when they graduate. And they're leading sailors and Marines into harm's way. That history has the ability to sort of inform the way that they act, decide, the way that they lead uh, in, a, in a lot of ways. This isn't just not another training uh, event that's going on. It's a learning experience. It's, uh, it's much more personal. This is our past. This is uh, humanity's past and what we did to each other. And that in order to prevent that from ever happening again, we really need to open our eyes and ears and understand that we have to uh, learn from our mistakes. Mm -hmm.